Hi there, it's Lynn. Guess what time it is? It's tax time. Yes, indeed, it's February now. And it dawned on me that a lot of you guys are preparing to get your taxes done if you're a solopreneur, or maybe you're incorporated and you're trying to get your corporate year end done so you can get your personal tax return. Either or, this video is gonna give you a few tips about what you should do during tax time. Maybe some uh, insider secrets, so to say. So let's get started. We're gonna talk a little bit about what you should be doing at tax time to drive down your personal tax. So let's get started with a nice easy one. Number one, charity receipts. Lots of us will donate to a charity or a nonprofit and there's a different way that you should be writing those off. In, if it's a nonprofit, those ones belong in your business and really under your business name. But a charity, a registered charity, if you look at your receipt, you'll have like nine digits on there which will show it's a registered charity. You get a better write-off if those are in your personal name on your personal income tax. So you kind of want to make sure that if you have any charity receipts, you have them given to you in the right name. So nonprofits in business, registered charities and personal. Number two, your spending habits, business and personal. If you're one of those people that has one bank account and you're using it for everything, business and personal, whether you're incorporated or you're a sole proprietor, well, that's gonna cost you a little bit in taxes. And there's some really good reasons why, and we talk about it in the Business for Newbies uh, and I think the Do-It-Yourself Bookkeeping course. There's a ton of reasons why that's gonna cost you more, but in this video, the biggest reason is because it's not clear to your tax person doing the taxes and when they see things that they think are personal so for example let's use a company like um let's say a walmart everybody has a walmart and you go to walmart and you have a, a receipt for fifty dollars well you don't know as a tax preparer if that's business or personal and and we don't necessarily always spend the time to look up the receipt so it can kind of get a little bit confusing when we don't know it goes out and we don't count it all the time in your tax return. So you wanna make sure you have as many write-offs as possible and when you mix them, you remove that clarity so we can do the best job for you as a tax preparer. Number three, leading into that, are you organized? So do you have a shoe box and that shoe box is, uh, well, kind of a mess or your files are, oh, I have to file them. The more disorganized you are, the more that's going to cost you in taxes. So if you take a disorganized mess to a tax preparer, they're going to do their best, but it's cost prohibitive for a tax preparer to spend a lot of time sorting it out and doing the right perfect job. You wouldn't want that tax bill. You're expecting a tax bill of, you know, X amount of dollars. And if they took all the time to do it properly, it would be like X amount of dollars, a whole lot more. So lots of times they won't take the time. They'll do the good job, but it won't be the best job as if it would be if you brought yourself organized to them. Now, how to organize, we cover that uh, in the Business for Newbies class in module 10, or you can just take module 10 by itself and it's under the do-it-yourself bookkeeping course. And we kind of just walk you through the best way to organize that to save money on your tax bill and on your taxes in essence at the end. Okay, so that leads me into number four, which is know your write-offs. So the write-offs are basically those little receipts. And if you don't know a whole lot about write-offs, then uh, we really cover them in great detail in the uh, module eight in the Business for Newbies class. But the write-offs are what drives down your income taxes. The write-offs are really in essence the, the secret sauce to kind of the tax return to make, think, make sure that you're driving it down. And there's some interesting write-offs that sometimes people don't know about. So one of the areas is if you traveled somewhere or I don't mean travel like you go to Las Vegas or something. I mean, I mean simply if you traveled, if you went from, you know, your town to some place which is 50 or 100 kilometers away and you travel to see a client there. So there's some travel, there's some meals, there's some interesting things with meals. So uh, for example, let's say you did an open house. Maybe you're in a business that does open house and you bought some donuts and stuff for that. Or maybe you did some kind of a meal and it had a charity involved. That's also a little bit different. So you wanna make sure that you are kind of dealing with the meals properly. Um, your vehicle is an amazing write-off. 
And there's lots of different ways to write it off, but you got to know the right way to get the maximum write off. So, um, so that's kind of another area. There's a lot of write offs. And like I said, I cover it in detail in chapter eight, but make sure you know your write offs and cause that's what drives your taxes down. Uh, number five is know your write offs and what you typically forget. Now, as a person who does bookkeeping and taxes, I got to tell you, there's some really weird things that people forget to include. And I'm going to give you my number one. Do you know what it is? This might surprise you a little bit. It's a cell phone. People often forget to give their cell phone bills. That's crazy. But if you think about it, you had the cell phone bill in your private name before you started your business. And that's where it comes out of your private account. And you just don't think about it. But yeah, a cell phone is actually one thing that a lot of people forget. And if you're a husband and wife team, then what happens is maybe we don't get both cell phone bills if you're entitled to write it off. So cell phones, probably number one. The second thing that we see is the online resources. So these are things like your antivirus or your storage or things that you buy online for a computer that you've always had and you've always paid for them. But now as a business, you can write those off. So don't forget the online resources. And probably another one, like I said, in the last point is your vehicle. It's a huge write off and you have to make sure that you're doing it properly and putting in the right expenses and kind of a little bit of a secret one. I don't know if I should make this another point or maybe it was part of this one, but when you take your cash out of the, of your bank account, sometimes people just go withdraw cash. And then they spend it, but they don't properly match those receipts up. So a little insider secret, every time you take cash out, even if you spent it on something, we have to say that is your income, your income as the owner, until we can find enough receipts to match up to it. But the reality of what happens is unless you're taking out $500 and you do $500 of receipts and you perfectly match that up, a lot of times what happens is that doesn't happen. So that increases your taxes because all of that cash gets allocated to you personally. So number six, um, your business return, get a professional to do it or to at the very least pay for somebody's time for an hour to get some professional advice. Now, I am okay with the online programs that you can buy and do your own tax return. That's okay for personal taxes in most cases, but I never support that in business because there's just things that a tax preparer knows that those programs can't possibly prepare you for. So, um, so an example would be a vehicle. So there's a couple different ways to write your vehicle off and it doesn't necessarily give you all the options. That would be one thing. For example, there's also, different ways to write things off and and the programs for business don't really tell you the rules and you got to remember income tax act is big right so it's subject to interpretation they're just simply asking a general question for the general public so if you're doing your business taxes yourself on one of those online programs meh might not be the best way to go okay number seven early gets you attention what's that mean if you think about it, it's now February and um, there is a whole bunch of millions of people here that are going to do their tax returns right away. And there's a small population of tax preparers that have to take all of those people to get their tax returns done. So in the first four months of the year, it's kind of really crazy busy and there isn't the time for your tax preparer to pay really good attention to you. So the information comes in, but just strictly due to volume, it's really easy to make mistakes and not catch everything or not make sure that your expenses are there. So if you're early in that getting out of the gate, then there's way more time. So you wanna be early so you get the proper attention from your tax preparer uh, because behind the scenes, not when we're sitting in front of a client, but behind the scenes, it's really busy and the stacks are really high on our desks. So you wanna make sure you're not part of that and that you're getting in early. Number eight is money in the bank can actually save you money. Does that make sense? Um, so when you kind of know what your tax return is going to be, you want to make sure that you pay your taxes right away because if you don't, then you're going to have interest and penalties. By the way, if you have a good tax preparer and you have a good relationship, you can say to them, before you finish off that tax return and we do all the paperwork, 
can you give me a draft so I can make sure that I see what that number is and we can talk about it? So if you can think about what happens behind the scenes, we do the tax return, uh, we get your information, we do the tax return, we're working on our computer and we are, um, then we prepare all of the paperwork and we get the papers ready for you to sign. We say, hey, come on in and sign this paper. Now, if you need to make a change, we have to redo a whole lot of work. And you remember I said, there's a lot of stuff going on already, so we wanna to try to avoid that. So if you say to your person, when you get it kind of done, could you fire me off an email, let me know what it is so I don't cause you to make any changes later. So you wanna know what your taxes are and then have the money in your bank account. Because if you don't have the money in your bank account, you're going to pay penalties and interest. And if you don't have the money, sometimes your tax preparer, especially if you're incorporated, there's some things potentially that they could do to sort of help you out of a particular cash flow, and that's called tax planning, and you need to see your accountant definitely for that. Okay, number nine, know, nine, know your deadlines. And by that I mean, you have deadlines for payroll and GST and corporate tax and personal tax and sole proprietor tax. You have deadlines for everything. And if and nobody tells you what those deadlines are. So CRA doesn't send you a letter and say these are what your deadlines are. It's up to you to know your deadlines. If you miss them, you will pay penalties or interest based upon your missing. Here's a little tip. Uh, for those of you that file your GST, if you pay your GST, that's good. But if you don't file the paperwork, even if it's paid, there's something called a late filing penalty and you'll still pay a penalty if you don't do the paperwork. So even if they have your their, your money, you'll still pay it. So anyway, uh, so you wanna make sure you know what your deadlines are so that you don't pay crazy unreasonable um, money out in penalties and interest. So those are your tax saving tips for this year. And like I said, if you want, you can take our Business for Newbies course, which has got a ton of information about how you do that back end of your business. If you want the light version, go for do-it-yourself bookkeeping, uh, which is the same module as in the Business for Newbies class. So it's the exact same piece. And uh, good luck with your tax season, and we will chat soon. Take care.